Excalibur needs a four title. Bang! There's the emotion. Jordan Richard. Oh, champion again. And good morning or afternoon or evening, wherever it is you are in the world. We are here at Samstown. We've got the finals finally here for the Super Senior Classic. I am Jason Thomas alongside PBA Hall of Famer Tom Hess. We've got our final four. They've bowled all uh, weekend, the last few days long, and, and we're down to those final four. Uh, Tom, what are you expecting to see? We've got a great field of finalists in this stepladder finals. Well, all week long, JT, it's been fireworks. Uh, I've talked about the high scores. Uh, we're down to the four best bowlers this week. Uh, these guys have all, all had honor scores, I believe, and I think we're going to see some more fireworks today. I expect really high-scoring matches here in our stepladder finals. Okay. Jack Jurek was our tournament leader in this event last year. He shot in the 160s against a lefty to lose. We got another lefty in the field today. What's your thoughts on the lefty's advantage being the only guy in the finals on that side of the lanes? Well, that's a great point. I th think Skip might have an advantage. Uh, he's throwing urethane from what I can see back here, and he's the only one on that side of the lanes. Last year, there was two lefties. I, I don't know if that helped or hurt John Marsala, who was our defending champion. Uh, but the righties could be you know, messing with each other's line, and who knows what Jack's going to have left when he finally gets out there to bowl his one game. So it could be a, a small advantage for Skip Pavone. Okay. And among the three righties, Chris Chris Warren has the highest rev rate out of out of all of them. Uh, do you think that's going to be an advantage if he can find a way to get through this first match against Lenny? It, it certainly could be. It, it could also be a hindrance. If he has to get too far to the left, that could not be to his advantage because we've seen that the further left you get, the scores seem to come down. Uh, we've talked all, all week long about staying to the right and that light swish hit. Uh, we've seen Chris leave a lot of solid nines, and so if he has to get too far to the left and try to make his ball shape at the end of the pattern, he could lose some carry. All right, just about 15 seconds left before we get underway with our opening match. Let's head out to the lanes. Chris Warren taking on Lenny Borish. Chris Warren will start. Early prediction, I think it's going to take 230 or higher to win this match. Just okay. Uh, these guys have been bowling so good. 20 minutes of practice. Uh, Chris, I did talk to him in between uh, the end of our group step ladders in this match. He did cheat just a little bit right there in the fifth frame after he was fighting some carry issues. He is going with the same ball he was throwing against Pete McCordick. The absolute power. Great looking shot. Yeah, but he looks like he's already a little bit further left than he was even in his match against Pete. Now, we have had some low scores the opening game of blocks. Uh, do, you, do you expect that to be the case here, or, or are we looking for uh, for big? You said 230 or better it's going to take to win this, so I think that answered my question. But uh, do you expect them to, to shoot big scores right out of the gate here? I, I do expect big scores. Uh, you know, there's no two more experienced players than Lenny Borsch and Chris Warren. Uh, both these guys have been in this situation many times. Ah, great shot from Lenny, unable to get the 10 out. But no, with the experience that these bowlers have, I don't expect either one of these players to be fighting much of, of nerves. Yeah. Yeah, they've been here many, many, many times. You know, nothing new for these guys. Just get out there and go make some great shots. Lenny put on a show yesterday during the Cashers round and match play for a little stretch there. Five game stretch, he was averaging over 270. Yeah, when he got lined up, he was able to throw some strikes. 
Chris Warren also a couple of big <clears throat> games yesterday, had the front 10, and also bowled a 300 game over on uh, just to our left. Got to hook asking that one to hook. Wow. And uh, I haven't seen him make many errant shots. He's been so good at controlling the pocket. But uh, that one clearly missed right. Didn't have enough on it to get back to the pocket. And more, likely, more than likely going to be an open frame here in the second. Yeah, Lenny's had a lot of success with the lightning blackout. But this pair must be playing just a little bit different because he is... Uh, Throwing an attention star. So, any rough start, still lots of bowling. Great chance, though, for Chris Warren to jump all over this mistake. If he could throw the next two, he'd be up 34. Great shot. Yeah, Chris is playing these two lanes completely different. He's further right on 20, then he is on 19. Just posted that shot though. Really, really nice execution. A couple of years ago when I bowled the title match of the USBC Senior Masters on this pair, the, the pair was quite different. You mean the lanes from, yeah, from, from one left another? To right. yeah. yeah, I had, I had the left lane quite a bit tighter. You can see here, we get a great look, Chris. Gonna cross right about the 10 board there. Yeah, three really great shots good. to start. Those were sweet. We talked a little bit this week about ball going through the pins the right way, and you mentioned a term. Uh, that went through the pins like the, the sweep. Yeah, <laughs> that ball hit like the sweep. So Lenny in an early deficit here. Yeah, just back-to-back uh, -back 10 pins on that lane. And I don't know. I mean, he got the one in the second right, and it didn't make it back around the corner. Is that is that just a ball issue here? The ball's not uh, saving enough energy? Yeah, to me, that ball looks just a touch early. Losing its energy, not getting through the pins the right way. he's going to throw that if he's going to continue to throw that ball I think he needs to move his feet a little to the right and and he's got to get up high flush ball's not creating a bunch of angle down lane now earlier or yesterday it was actually Lenny had a big run the last three games of the cashers round and then you know he talked about wanting to throw a different bowling ball uh, to start the match play and Jim Callahan talked him out of it uh, do you, is that the same bowling ball here that he's using that he wanted to use yesterday in match play? Well, he's making a ball change right here, JT, and I think he's going. I, I couldn't see it. he was standing in front of it when he picked it up, but I think he went back to that lightning blackout. And that sure is the ball there. He's moved a little bit left with that one hmm. in the pocket again. 10 pin. Well, he's made three good shots out of four, and he's got zero strikes. And uh, Chris Warren is lined up, so Lenny Boris already, it's the fourth frame, and he's in big, big trouble here. Yeah, I, uh, I kind of at a loss for words. I thought Lenny would get up here and throw lots of strikes. Of course, you know, he just pulled the group step ladders, had a nice little break. And now Chris Warren, he can just take complete control of this match with two more strikes. Yeah, you can see on the left lane, Chris crossed right at 10. His first shot here on the right lane was was more around 7, 8. Now he's made a little bit of a move left there, it looks like. And 
Doesn't get the 10 out. Well, that's exactly what Lenny needed to see. A miss there from Chris. On a pretty good shot. Messenger going in front of the 10. But uh, we could be seeing a little bit of early transition, right, Tom, with uh, these all these 10 pins after all the strikes they threw in practice? Yeah. Well, actually, JT, they didn't throw a whole lot of strikes in practice. I was watching. The guys were... You know, it wasn't like in the group step ladders when, when Lenny and, and Chris came on and they pretty much struck all eight of their shots. Guys were kind of playing different parts of the lane. I saw quite a few guys going high. I actually saw Lenny leave a 2 4 eight, 10 there on the left lane. Uh, so all four of these bowlers came out and got 10 minutes of practice on this pair. And they, I think the righties have already affected the right-hand side of the lane, and we are seeing some transition here. Yeah, not, nothing major. It is ice oil they're bowling on, so we haven't seen, you know, what we see with fire where all of a sudden the ball will make a good shot and it goes big four. Uh, but it's a little more subtle. The, the transition leads to ten pins, and that, that's got to hurry. And Wow, that one came back a long way. Looks like you got it right quick, and able to get the four pin to trip out. Yeah, that one looked just a touch slow to me as well. Uh, maybe trying to get it to come around the corner to get the 10 out and goes high. Fortunate to get that trip four. Lindy's just not getting the ball high enough up in the pocket. He's got to cheat just a touch right, I think, and just, you know, jam it up in there. That's a better shot. Much better. Looked to me like he did move his feet just a touch to the right. Just a more aggressive shot. Almost more right to left instead of left to right like he was trying to play the first few frames. All 34 right. pin deficit for Linney through four frames, but a lot of bowling left. Yeah, let's see if he can do the same here on the left lane. This is the tighter of the two lanes. Asking that oh. Hmm. Asked it to hook, it did. You've said all week that light mixer is a great hit here. Lenny back in the match. I give him a little more room on that right, um, excuse me, on the left lane. Surprised by that. Chris Warren leading by 24, can extend to 34 here. But this one far from over. Yeah, That's Chris got that one a lot. way right. Man. <clears throat> wow. Interesting. You know, that's a split. But in a lot of ways, that's a good break, break for Chris, being the 2 7 10 instead of the 2 8 10. Make probability goes way up without that 8 pin back there. Yeah, we know somebody who can make a 2 10 in this building, sitting next to me in the booth here. <laughs> he did it for about a year on Bull TV. <laughs> Chris gets the two. He looks surprised that that ball didn't hook more going across the lane. Well, 41 feet, though, this pattern. Ice oil, as we mentioned. So all of a sudden. Yeah, we got a 12-pin match, and Lenny can get up and throw a couple strikes and take the lead in his next turn. Better shot from Chris. Yeah, that one was perfect. Right down the target line and rips the 10 out. Yeah, that one right over 10, as you can see here. Out to about seven. Not a whole lot of belly. Lenny with two strikes here makes it a match. 245 the max for Borish. 
247 the max for Warren. Yep, strike here cuts it to two, and he can take the lead if he can throw the next two. It's in. Oh, gets the 10 out. I mean, that was a little bit of a high hard one it looked like, Tom. Yeah, that's what I think he needs to do. I, I think he needs, just needs to jam it in there. That's what he's done both times that he struck there on the right lane. Last time on this lane, he, he bellied a little bit left to right. Got the light swisher. Pretty good shot there. Oh, perfect. Carried the light mixer on that lane the last time up, and Lenny Borish has roared back and now has an eight pin lead. Quite a turn of events there with one frame. Chris sends that one. Oh, high flush. Yeah, he didn't get that one as far right. So Chris taking the lead back in the match. Max scores Chris Warren 247, Lenny Boris 245. So it's going to come down to the final two frames. I think he did the same thing he did in his group step ladder. When he didn't have a double through the first five frames against Pete, he cheated to the right. I think that's the same thing he's done there on the right lane after the 2710. Huge shot coming up here for Chris. If he strikes here, nothing Lenny can do can shut him out. If he were to miss, Lenny can get up and steal the match. Pretty good shot. Is it going to carry? Oh, man. <clears throat> yeah, it looked pretty good to me. Just a touch left. Yeah. Just a touch. It didn't come off the pattern quite as hard as the others. And it kind of came in behind the head pin and sent the messenger forward yeah. instead of back into the 10. Head pin right in front of the 10. Should be nice, easy spare for Chris. And Lenny's going to have the opportunity to step up and seal the win. Hook a little. OK. So 226 now, Chris Warren's max score. So the next two strikes for Lenny Borish would get the job done. If you were to miss here or the first one in the 10th, Chris Warren going to have a chance to get up and strike out for the win. That's good. Oh. Yeah, high hard one again. That one maybe just a little bit inside of the last one. And the ball. Not able to hold, leaving the four pin. Creeped up just a touch. You can see Lenny kind of fell out of that one just a touch. So it's going to set up a situation, assuming Lenny can convert on the four pin of basically whatever he does, Chris Warren has to match minus one to get the victory. Oh, that's a little quick. Yeah. All right. Oh, got there. Got back and able to get the 10 pin to go late. Good aggressive shot. I thought it might have been just a touch quick. 
He and liked he it from the get-go. Gave get it the go. little hip shuffle to get, get that 10 out of there. I'm going to take a re-rack here. Collect his thoughts. Big shot right here. As JT said, Chris got a match. What Lenny does. Yeah, this is a big, big strike here because if he doesn't get this one, Chris would just need nine spare strike. So this one would force Chris to double. Oh, that's good. Oh, Man. my goodness. <clears throat> well, it, th that's not that big a deal, really, because the strike was what he needed. It, yeah, yes and, and no. And he's going to lose the, count, you know, a little bit of count. count. He's, he's going to fall to 213. So now nine spare nine. Chris doesn't even need to throw a strike in the 10th frame. Yeah. But uh, he will still need a mark, and he, he has opened on that lane recently. All right, so 213 for Lenny Borish. And now Chris Warren, nine spare nine or better to wrap up the match and move on to bowl skip Pavone. Oh, and he got that one right. Okay. Oh. Got back to the pocket. But again, a little bit behind the head pin. Messenger going in front of the 10. Chris Warren going to have to make it and get nine or better. If he were to spare and get an eight count, we'd go to a roll off. Yeah, he trusted that, but that was an errant shot. He, you know, he can't get it that far right on that lane. He did miss a 10-pin earlier. But no trouble on that one. So nine or better to move on. If he gets eight, we've got a roll-off, one ball roll-off. Anything less than eight, Lenny Borish wins the match. That's a much better shot. Yeah, much more direct and wow. gets the nine count, wins by a pin. And Chris Warren will move on. Lenny Borish finishing fourth. There's another look at it. He, I think on purpose, he made sure he didn't miss right because I think in his mind that was the only way he was going to get less than eight. Tom, what do you do when you, uh, when you really need one and the lanes are kind of set up how they are like this? He, you know, in that situation, I, I think Chris made the right move, but he almost overthrew it. Uh, 41 feet, ice oil, you know, he got a couple right on that lane that, that didn't make it back. The one actually split. There he moved left, tried to jam, but he almost overthrew it. JT, it almost didn't make it up. That that yeah. very easily could have two tend sure. again. Sure. Two eight tend. Um, you know, in that situation, I just just you got to step up there and try to make a good shot. Yeah. Well, he did enough to win, and now uh, our tournament leader Jack Jurek going to get in for a couple of practice shots. Skip Pavone will get his practice shots, and then we'll get underway with match number two. Remember, stick around before the stepladder finals championship match will be giving away a storm bowling ball of choice here on bowl tv so that coming up after this next match with chris warren and skip pavone we've also got uh, another event coming up uh next week for you that uh this hall of famer sitting next to me is going to be participating in he's also a former champion of the event the usbc senior masters uh, tom uh, you've had a chance to kind of sit here and watch bowling all week i'm sure you're itching 
uh, to bowl. How are you feeling coming into the Senior Masters, an event that you've won in the past? Well, after my, my first four events on the, the Senior Tour this, this year, I'm, I'm feeling great, obviously. Um, you know, it's been a joy sitting here in the booth calling all the action with you this week. But, yeah, I'm, I'm ready to get back out on the lane. <laughs> right. Enough watching bowling, enough talking about bowling. I want to go bowling. Um, you know, the schedule coming up next week. Uh, we're going we're gonna to practice tomorrow. Then our qualifying is going to start on Tuesday. Three squads, 8 a.m. noon and 4 p.m. Pacific time. Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. And we'll cut down and we'll start our bracket. Top 63-plus defending champion John Janowitz. Uh, our bracket match play is going to start Friday, June 7th, 9 o'clock in the morning. Okay. Well, uh, it's going to be a great event, great field set to, to bowl here. I uh, saw Jason Couch in the building a little bit earlier today. He'll be bowling. Chris Barnes, all the big names on the PBA 50 Tour here this week competing. Uh, and we'll have all the coverage for you right here on Bowl TV. Defending champion John Janowitz also uh, will be here competing. So uh, we're looking forward to that. We've also got the PWBA Tour wrapping up in Nashville. They're underway with their match play, the last event of the Classic Series. Uh, congratulations to uh, Sherry Tan. She took home her fifth career PWBA title last night here on Bowl TV. And uh, she's one of those players in the match play competing right now, top 24 and uh, they've got two more rounds of match play after this morning uh, before they have the stepladder finals for that event tomorrow. Skip Pavone, he's our only lefty left in the field. And uh, last year we saw uh, John Marsala take home the, the trophy from the left side of the lane. And uh, Jack Jurek was also the number one seed last year. And we talked a little bit about it in the open, Tom. Uh, what do you think Skip needs to do here to set the lanes up for himself to give himself the best possible chance to take home these two wins and, and the trophy? Hey, in, in my honest opinion, if he's going to throw urethane, not throw as many shots as he's allotted. Yeah. Because uh, that urethane will, will change the lanes. Uh, but, no, I think Skip just needs to go keep doing what he was doing. He went undefeated last night. Uh, didn't bowl any really big games last night. Yeah. But didn't bowl any low games. I think pretty much every game he had last night, was uh, between 230 and 250. Yeah, and, and if he you know, bowls a couple of 240s, he's probably got a pretty good chance to win, although uh, there, there really is the opportunity out there for both Chris Warren and Jack Jurek to shoot a big number. So going to be interesting to see how it plays out. Jack Jurek uh, pulled 160 something on this pair last year he didn't really love this pair in qualifying but he did find a way last night to bowl a big game on it against Lenny Borish to lock up the number one seed so how do you think he's feeling uh coming in while, while watching his practice shots I think he feels pretty good he made a move last night he told me he just moved a little further to the right you know and just kind of rolled it in front of him and he has confidence coming into the pair Skip is going to make Chris finish on that right lane, uh, the right lane that he struggled on quite a bit, in my opinion. Uh, I thought the scores would be way higher that game. It's like a, maybe a ball change here yeah, for Chris. Chris has made a ball change. He's gone to the lightning blackout. Yeah, ball that goes a little bit. It's a quicker change of direction yeah. ball, and you see it do it right out of the gate there. Through the face, three, four, seven. That's a ball that he can trust now, I think, and I, he just didn't trust that one. So w what do you think was the rationale behind the ball change there? Do you think the other ball was just losing too much energy and tenning, ten pinning too much? I don't know. I wouldn't say necessarily losing too much energy. I think the reason he changed the balls was – the, the fill ball where he had to get nine and he, you know, straightened it up in front of him and it didn't hook. Um, he was just looking for a little more down lane reaction. So I'm sure this is a move that he's made all week. That just an errant shot from Chris. Yeah, you could definitely tell that uh, that ball does what he thought it would do, but maybe just a, a little bit of a bad guess, right, on where, where to stand. Right, because he gets no practice with that ball uh, after the match.
Nice start there for Skip. Yeah, when we watched Skip last night, uh, with him throwing that urethane ball, his miss was actually, actually had to be to the left. When he missed left, he got it to roll up and, and got some light swishers. Skip got in trouble yesterday when he missed in. We saw when he missed in, he didn't have any hold. Ball went high. Brian Kane working on getting that scoreboard updated. There you go. We can see Skip Pavone leads by 12, can extend to 22 with an early double here. That one's high up and at him and 10 back. Yeah, if Skip gets that look for two games, he's going to be tough to beat. So this is a big shot for Chris. After the ball change, goes high. Did he just not throw it good? Does he need to move? Yeah, pretty risky move, but I think you know he needed to make it knowing that Skip was probably going to shoot better than 220 this game. Move left, got that one to the right, and that's wow. the problem that happens when you try to get too much down lane motion. We've seen Chris leave a lot of those stone nines. It's just like a vortex of pins going around the nine. Mm. Can't throw it any better than that. Yeah, we saw him leave one of those with this ball last night, and that mm -hmm. made him switch to the other ball. It was, a, it was a different ball. It wasn't the ball he was throwing. He was throwing an absolute power in the first match. Last night when he made that ball change, he switched to a harsh reality, oh, okay. which is an even stronger ball, but a, but a smoother ball, yeah. a much slower response ball. So it doesn't change direction as much. Well, based on lane. those two shots you've seen so far with this one, Tom, you think this is, you know, going to be a costly move for Chris? I think it's what he's got to do to win, JT. I really do. I think he's got to create some shape down lane, and he's got to, you know, maybe not hit quite that perfect and get the pins to fly around. Uh, Chris is a, a very powerful bowler, and he gets the ball around the 1-3. He's going to throw some pins around, and, this match is far oh, wow. from over. That one came oh. back from a long way. Leaves a ringing 10, almost a 7-10. Yeah, Chris could be in trouble now. Uh, I thought that one was pretty good. Oh, probably a little move off of the solid 9 and then the flat 10. Wonder if all the bowling that the right-handers did on this pair has already changed them enough. Uh, looks like an early advantage for Skip Pavone. Well, we did talk about it in the open, that this could have been the way it played out with Skip being the only lefty, having that side to himself. If he could do a nice job of breaking them down, righties would have to deal with some transition, and he'd have a slight advantage. Strike here will put him up 33 pins through three frames. That looks really good. Oh, nice. Gets that seven pin to just bump, bump straight out. And you know when that ball is doing that, You've got the advantage, especially when your opponent's ball rings the 10, right? Well, not just ringing the 10, solid nine as well. Chris, you know, first shot I think was just errant. His last two shots, really good. Neither one struck, he's in trouble. We'll see if he decides to stay with that ball. Skip can take a 43 pin lead here through four frames with one more strike. Skip got that one a little further to the, wow, that one overhooked. A little further to the left, I thought. Yeah, good break. And Just leaving the uh, the eight pin, six goes out. Could have easily been a six eight. We've almost got a Cobb and Carpy of our last match here. Yeah, it you're looks right. Looks like Skip has a commanding lead as Chris did, and then it came down to the 10th frame. So a lot of bowling left. Big couple of shots here for Chris Warren. What do you think he needs to do on his next shot to kind of tame down that ball reaction and get the ball to go through the pins the right way? 
I, I think I would like to see Chris go back to the absolute power, cheat a little bit right, and, and just make a good shot. Off of his fill ball, I think he moved in left and just kind of jammed it in there. I think he needs to move right and jam it in there. He has decided not to do that. He is staying with the blackout. I mean, it's tough to ball change off a solid nine. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Looks like he tried to go a little bit more up the lane, and that one had no chance of holding. Yeah, and he's coming back to make another ball change, but it might be too late. He is going to that harsh reality. I don't think he missed in there. I think he was trying to do that to try to tame the, the back end reaction, and it just didn't lay off at all. Yeah, the, the, the quicker bowling ball, you get it to the left. As soon as it sees the friction, he's getting into the flatter part of the lane. Uh, all the guys that were when they were doing all of their practice were further to the right, so they didn't really help tame down that flat part of the lane. And Chris pays the ultimate price there, but makes the spare. Yeah, great, great spare there. He went after it because he knew he had to make it to stay in this match. So good look here. Just moves left. Throws the big hook at it. And perfect execution. Gonna go with a different ball here, as you th as you thought he might, Tom. Yeah, he's to that harsh reality. The same change we saw him make last night when that uh, blackout started going a little bit too sideways. Even further left. That's a pretty good shot there. Pretty impressive knowledge of his equipment. Just kind of knowing what the options are, and uh, he's he's. Cycle him through him as quickly as he can to stay in this match. Yeah, that was a big step left. He was five left with his feet on the approach, drifts even further left, and, you know, he was playing right around 10, maybe 12. That one was up 15. Oh, that's in. Yeah, up and at him. And wow. Just enough to hold for high flush. So Skip Pavone with the strike there in the fifth. Skip yeah. looks to have some room right now, JT. He'd been out around the 3-4 board on this lane. That one was up about six. Well, that's one of the nice things about the urethane. It does tame down the pattern quite a bit. You do have some carry issues you've got to deal with, but right now Skip's carry is awfully good. Yeah, Skip throwing that hammer, 78D. That was a good one. Yeah, that one right down the center of the target line, but uh, maybe missed it just a touch and left a flat seven. That's the other thing the urethane does, JT. It does leave a few corners, that's for sure. And uh, that's just what Chris Warren needed to see, though, was Skip stopping his his striking. And uh, with a spare here, if Chris Warren can get up and, and strike in the sixth, he'll be able to cut into that lead a little bit. Yeah, 243 the max for Warren. 259 for Pavone with a spare here. Oh, wow. And he missed it. So a huge opening now for Chris Warren. Yeah. He can throw a double here and cut the lead to four with yep. two more strikes. By uh, max scores, just a four-pin advantage now per, for Pavone. 247 his max. As I said, 243 for Warren. Oh. Well, let's see if that ball change works on this lane. Oh, he got it further right on that lane again. Oh, oh are my you goodness. What is that? Wow. He almost left the 7, 9, 10. High flush, 9, 10. Wow. You got to be kidding me. Uh, that might be one of the worst breaks I've ever seen. Well, we've seen this high flush hit carry funny all week in this building. And now at a really critical time, we, we see the oddest leave we've seen all week. 
and you know, I think he's got to make it. Great spare. Great conversion. Let's get a look at it one more time. Going straight at it. Just throwing it a, throwing a little hook at it to just pick up enough to get the nine pin out. And uh, with the spare, Chris trails by 24. But it could have been a lot worse if that would have been an open frame. Well, I'm speechless. Solid 9-10. Good looking shot there. And that one splits the 8 9. And uh, Chris really doing kind of his bread and butter from the 90s the old thumbs down, get left. Just just crowbar on it. Yeah, you can see, see how much smoother the ball is there on the left lane. Uh, my experience is on this pair is that left lane's a little tighter. Ball not changing direction quite as much on the left lane. We've seen Chris go. Solid nine through the face, and then that nasty nine ten because the ball's changing direction so much on the right lane. Skip still up 24, still in control. That's a better shot. And that one high flush, leaving an eight pin. At least he got the seven out, though. <laughs> Turnabout's fair play, right? <laughs> yeah, right. Wow. <laughs> uh. But uh, with the spare here, his max score drops to 237. Chris Warren's max score 223. So still got a close match in anybody's ball game. The pins are fighting back today, JT. They're not supposed to do that. Spare there for skip. So flat seven on this lane the last time up. And uh, do you think he might be seeing just a touch of transition carry down or a little early hook? And, and if so, what do you think he needs to do to get the ball to strike here in the eighth? Well, if his ball's going to hit identical to the last shot he threw, he's just got to cheat his feet a little bit left, try to get a little higher up into the pocket. Change that angle just a touch, get the four into the seven. But then he's got to worry about it breaking high, as we've seen him just That's solid in. eight. Yeah. And oh, six-pin trips out. Yeah, bold move. Solid eight. Let's go a little higher and trip to six instead. Yeah, man. Well, do you think you, he did what you, you said he might need to do, creep a little bit left and jam it in there? That's what it looked like he did to me. Big shot here for Chris Warren. He did make a nice pitch on this lane the last time up, but left the weird 9-10 in the pocket. Let's see if he can get all 10 to go this time. Oh, oh man, just a <laughs> that was crazy. Wow. That one went through the pocket so hard, the 9-pin. I mean, that was like flush, not even high flush, and the ball almost hooked by the 9-pin. Well, yeah, he, he got lucky that the 3-pin went into the 6-pin and then kicked sideways and then rolled into the nine because the, the ball sure didn't get it. But a huge strike. If he strikes here in the ninth, he'd still have a max score of 223. And uh, that would force Skip to get the next two and eight spare or seven spare to lock it up. That's a good shot. Great shot, yes. Very, very nice. And it Really, just a pleasure to see you know the the moves that he made and work through this game to get himself in position to have a chance to win. Wouldn't you agree? Oh, I agree. He's he's a good seven reboards left of where he was playing in his match against Lenny, and he's only bowled you know nine frames in that match. Just shows how great of a talent he is, how he knows his equipment, knows what he needs to do, and the trust to make those moves in such a big spot. Okay, Skip needs the next two. If he were to miss here, Chris Warren's going to have a chance to step up, win the match. Oh, and that's left. Wow. Hooks back nicely. Flush in the pocket. And uh, Skip is set up to win this one. What do you what did you see here on this shot? Well, Tom? as you can watch, Skip is going to get this ball further to the left. 
He's been throwing it straight down the lane. See how much that's out to three or four. Creates a better shape. That's probably the one that's went through the pins the best for Skip. Strike seven spare will lock up the match. Anything less, Chris Warren going to have a chance to win it. Gave that one the room as well. Oh, man. Ring seven. Just a pretty good shot, but he just started to lose the, the carry on that lane the last several shots. And uh, I think Skip executed exactly what he wanted to execute there. Uh, after the right lane, he, he gave it a little bit more room to the left, and it went through the pins. That was a great shot. Uh, unfortunately, the the four pin decided it didn't want to hit the seven. He did miss one of these earlier, so very important for him to convert this. And just, just gets it. it. Okay. He missed it left last time, so I think he probably was thinking, yeah, don't do that again. Catches the right side of the seven pin. Count. Fairly important here. He, he just needs eight or better to force Chris to double for the win. hop there nine count and that's going to be enough 215 chris warren will need two strikes and three pins to advance to our title match it's been a an interesting roller coaster though on this lane the last couple of shots tom yeah i don't think you know i think chris has to move i don't think he can stay where he was he barely got the nine out i think he's got to cheat just a, just a little bit the left? Yeah, cheat a little left. Keep that ball in the oil just a touch longer. He likes it. Nice. Gets the first one. Yeah, I think I think he did exactly that. It looked to be a little bit further to the left with his feet. And that one. Yeah, so you got that one yeah. to, to straighten up. And the ball actually, instead of continuing to drive left and driving past the nine there, you could see the ball square up and go a little bit more forward. The ball actually hit the nine that time. So one more strike and three pins. Chris Warren move on. He was always one of the best clutch players on tour back in the 90s. Does he have one more strike left in him? Uh, you don't win 56 regionals in uh, all the national tour titles by not being clutch. That was posted. Wow, nice. great shot. Time. He was always so good in the clutch, and he just went up there and posted that one. One more look at it, just like the last one. Yeah, right there, he's just thinking, okay, I've done everything I can do. Now is it going to strike? Because you can only control what happens till you get to the foul line. Once it's out of your hands, it's out of your control. All right, just straight down the middle. Takes the count, and Chris Warren will move on. 221 to 215 over Skip Pavone. And boy, that was that was a clinic in in uh, ball knowing your ball bowling balls and making great adjustments. I mean, you know, normal person loses that match 99 times out of hundred, wouldn't you say? Uh, you know, JT, as you're as you were talking about that, I'm thinking about what I would do in that situation. Having bowled a really solid game with the absolute power of the game before, trusting himself to make the change to the lightning blackout, looking for more down lane reaction. That being the wrong move, in that situation, I might have went back to the absolute power and just tried to force it. Make good shots. <laughs> right, right, right. Chris says, nope, nope, I know I've got to get over here. I know this isn't the right ball. Makes the great change. What he's been doing, I mean, when, when he was here in front of us in the match play uh, last night, we saw that's what he did. He went through that same pr progression, uh, committed to it, went and made great shots, and to stay with it after that solid 9-10. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, speaking of bowling balls, we do have our big giveaway coming up right now. And uh, first off, I'd like to thank our friends at Storm. 
the Bowlers Company. And uh, we've got a storm ball of choice coming up here for you guys. So be sure once the uh, submit entry button comes up that you're out of full screen mode on your desktop. When the submit entry button comes up, you can, uh, you, yeah, Tom's, Tom's like, I'm going to push the button too. I need, a, I need a ball for the Masters next week. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, be sure to take it out of full screen mode. And uh, good luck. Storm Bowling Ball up for grabs here on Bowl TV while we watch Jack Jurek, our top seed, practice. He's going to take on Chris Warren for the title. What do you think Jack uh, needs to do here in practice to kind of get himself ready for this one against Chris? Well, if he's watching what Chris did, I think that's going to put some doubt into Jack's mind. Uh, you can see, as I mentioned earlier, I talked to Jack uh, this morning when he was down here. Last night when he bowled that big 260 game, he told me that he moved just a little bit further right on this pair and just kept it in front of him and tried to roll it. His first shot there, seeing where Chris Warren is playing, I think has, has led Jack to try to go to the left and 210. Jack does not have the hand that Chris Warren does. Uh, my opinion, Jack's got to do what Jack does. Jack can't worry about what Chris is doing. He's got to go find out where he needs to play the lanes the best, and I think Jack needs to be further to the right. Yeah, we saw him throw this ball in practice and kind of go back and forth between the two. This ball he was kind of being nice to and going up the lane, I think probably to try to set up a little bit of burn to his right. Yeah, that, uh, that second shot, that's the magic gem. Attention star was what he threw the first shot. But, uh, yeah, to your point, I mean, Chris Warren, even though Jack's going to get eight shots here, uh, he, he he's pretty well lined up now. And, and I think uh, with that ball that he's throwing, he's probably – Rick Darris, congratulations. You win the Storm Ball of Choice. So our marketing folks will be reaching out to you this week to uh, get your information. But congrats, Rick, on the Storm Ball of Choice, and thank you to Storm for providing uh, the giveaway prize. But uh, Jack made a, a nice move to the left there with the Magic Gem, and that one looked really good. I'm not saying that Jack can't get in there and, and do what he can't do what Chris does, obviously, but he can play in there with Chris. That's not what I was yeah. uh, implying at all. Well, it feels the to other me thing like that Jack Chris hasn't thrown too many shots with that ball, right? So, I mean, I feel like he's going to have that ball work this whole game, right? So Jack probably is going to need a bigger score, wouldn't you say? Well, see, that's just what I was getting ready to say. Jack can get in there right on top of Chris with this magic gem. is one of our stronger bowling balls, and he could change Chris's yeah. reaction slightly. But he's also sort of playing into Chris's hands too, right, if he does that, because then Chris, he's got the advantage in rev rate. This is ball reaction. I would want Chris on the right lane. Okay. To finish on the right lane. Yeah, to finish on the right lane. Uh, Chris looked way more comfortable on the left lane than he did on the right. But as I've said many times, in this situation, if I'm the number one seed, I like to finish first. I like to have the opportunity to step up and just end the match. The only time that I that I get away from that is if the left lane for me is bad. Mm -hmm. And Jack, you know, he, he split a couple times of his practice shots here on the left lane, so maybe he doesn't want to finish on the left lane. Jack getting us underway. It's got a hook. That's got a hook a lot. It did. And nice. It does. Yeah, that was a little further right than uh, the practice balls that he'd been throwing. But you got to trust it. Ten out late. Chris Warren threw a big string of strikes to finish his last match. Let's see if Jack has changed them at all with the practice shots. What Chris Warren can do here. Looks like uh, pretty much what he was doing when he left off. Yeah, looking at his feet there, looks like maybe just a, a touch move to the left. He doesn't get this ball quite as far to the right as he had been. You can see that one straightening up, not going sideways. Chris after that one shot, still looks to be very lined up. 
for the double. That one was in. And shreds the rack. Can, can we call that the Hess now, the uh, the light mixer? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I'd go that far. But you can see here, Chris doesn't get this ball near as far to the right. That's the tighter of the two lanes. Jack Jerk trying to stay even here in the early going. Pretty good. And Great shot. That was sweet. Obviously playing a quite a bit further to the right than Chris, using the same break point though. And that is just picture perfect. All even through two. Using a different road map to get there, but both in the pocket. That one a little bit in of the last one, and that one goes high flush. Yeah, I think that was a, a little bit better shot than his last one. I think he got his last one he trusted a little too far to the right. I think he wanted to tighten it up a little bit. Maybe a little too much. Lucky to get the four out. Chris likes that one. Wow. What happened there? I liked it too. Well, as you can see here, he doesn't get that one. Uh, he just didn't get it right as quick. Yeah, it wasn't, wasn't right as quick. It was in just a touch. And do you think Looked maybe like where Jack is playing, maybe starting to burn up a spot, and that one hooked a little early and didn't get, get there? Th th that could be, but it also looked like Chris just kind of missed that one. It was more spun than rolled Yeah, just slightly. Uh, Chris's ball has been changing direction very violently off the back end of the pattern here the first two games that one just a slightly errant shot from Chris is all unfortunately pays the ultimate price leaving the 2 8 10 yeah with his angles being as open as they are like you said to, to your point about spinning uh, that's going to make the ball push a little bit longer right and yeah yeah when he doesn't roll it as much and you, you spin it just a little bit gets it through the front just a little quicker and just didn't pick up didn't spin that one. No, that one was really good. <laughs> he got all of that one. Yeah, you can tell from his reaction, he, he wasn't happy with that shot on the right lane. Yeah, just look how much more up the back his hand stays on that shot, and it rolls up big time, goes through the pins. But uh, now Jack Jerk with the chance to take a big lead here after the open frame by Warren in the third. Pretty good. Oh, oh, oh my. Oh. oh, I was about to just fall under the table and and not be able to get up the rest of the day. Uh, but but one of the pins somehow off the left wall. Able Watch to, this. Yeah, catch the eight pin. Solid eight. It, oh, wow. We've been talking about it. We've seen a lot of those. Solid pocket hits, not carry. 35-pin lead now for Jack Jurek. Can extend to 45 with one more strike here in the fifth. It's tough to throw one like that and say he got a good break. Another good-looking shot. Oh, that's really good. Oh, oh my goodness. <laughs> First the 8-pin almost stays up, and then the next shot, the 9-pin. Squeak's giving him the eye there as he's walking back. <laughs> But he couldn't have thrown these two shots much better. Oh, just the ball just touched it. I tell you, the pins are fighting back again they, today, they, JT. They are. They are. It's bad when you throw it that good, and you still kind of, gosh, I got lucky to get a strike. Yeah. Now pressure on Chris Warren. He's got to 
get a strike here. Stay in this one and gets the light mixer to carry. Yeah, again, all of a sudden, you know, Chris's ball was going two sideways on this lane with the solid nine and then the solid nine ten. And now it, it's starting to, I think, burn up a little bit earlier. And it's he's losing his down lane reaction. We just saw him two eight ten. That one doesn't suck up flush, but the light hit carries so well in this building that he was able to get that strike. Still max score 265, so a long way to go left in this one, but Chris needs to keep striking. Good oh, shot that one. Nicely done there. Chris likes this left lane. He's lined up on that left lane. Jack trying to stay perfect. Remember his last shot on this lane, almost left a solid eight. Another good looking shot there. And uh, no eight pin on that one. Yeah, no, that was 10 in the pit. Very well executed. You see, post the shot all the way. Ball goes through the pins. Very classic style of Jack Jurek. Yeah, that's just great balance right there. Look at that. He he was rock solid. I don't think Lawrence Taylor could have knocked him off that spot. <laughs> or Tom Hess. <laughs> I wouldn't try to knock Jack off that spot. <laughs> Lawrence Taylor, however, might. Jurek looking for the front seven. That's got to hurry. And it does. Wow. He has got a great ball reaction right now. Yeah, I'm pretty impressed by what Jack is doing here in this championship match, watching his practice. He did not look very comfortable at all. Saw him throw a couple shots during practice and kind of look up like, oh, no, not again. And then just steps up here and throws the front seven. Chris, important that he keeps striking to keep pace. Still possible 265, so far from over. Another light hit on that right lane. Yeah, Chris's ball is starting to burn up on the right lane. It's just not coming off the pattern like it was. But uh, still able to get the strike, and he's still in this one. That one just makes it back. Carries the Tom Hess's favorite hit in this building. Got to hook a lot. Oh, that's a really good shot, wow. JT. Yeah. Wow. That one was that one was good. He got the, the full roll out of that one. Oh, just, yeah, he loves this one right from the get-go, staring it down. All right, so Jack Jurek still in control, but uh, Chris Warren putting the pressure on, possible 265. Jack. If he were to strike here, would need a couple of spares to lock up the match. But an open frame or a couple of misses here, Chris Warren could still could still steal this one. It looks a little bit in, uh, but uh, it laid off. Look at him. He's like, I got away with that one. It's nice when everywhere you throw it, the ball just goes high flush, right, Tom? <laughs> yeah, Jack's uh, definitely got some room right now. Being balanced, getting out of it the same. You know, he's obviously had some room this week. You don't average 241 for the week without uh, having a little bit of room. And to get up, make one more really good one, and pretty much put this thing to bed. That's a good shot. Yeah, that was a little bit in as oh. well. He trips the four. So great break there for Jack Jurek. 
And now Chris Warren will have to go off the sheet to have any chance. And there it leaves, is. yeah, he just could not get the ball to come up high in the pocket on that lane. And with that 10 pin, Jack Jurek is gonna be your champion. Yeah, Chris just, you know, in my opinion, was kind of fortunate to strike in the fifth and the seventh over there. That ball just started laboring a little bit too much. He's been absolutely dead flush every shot here on the left lane. But that right lane. Just gave Chris some fits. Only thing left now, can Jack Jurek finish this one off in style and bowl a 300 the final game? Doesn't matter there, Chris Warren already eliminated. Given, uh, given Jack the, the handshake, but uh, Jack's got a chance to do something cool here. Bowl a 300 in the title match. Yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty cool. Great tournament from Chris Warren. That's in, and it lays off. So front 10 now for Jack Jurek. He just said, I need to go gambling tonight. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's going to have some money to do it. He's you know, that's the miss right now, though, on a 41-foot pattern with ice oil. Missing in a little bit. Both players have been in there. They've created a little bit of shape in there. We, we saw this lane get a little bit tight for Chris Warren. How about one more? Yeah. Nice. Everywhere he throws it, Tom, right now, it just goes flush. Yeah, that one was a little right. Yeah. He, uh, he trusted that one. <laughs> Hall of Fame Tom Baker sitting right in front of us says, yeah, he's loose now. <laughs> oh. uh, front 11, you ought to be a little bit loose. <laughs> oh, you can see him wiping, wiping uh, away tears already. Man, that's funny. He didn't. He didn't want to get the. He didn't want to get a warning. <laughs> All right, stepping up here. He has been pretty much flush every shot. One more to finish off in style. Oh man. Quitter. Messenger goes in front of the 10. 299 for Jack Jurek, but he is your 2024 USBC Super Senior Classic champion. And now Damon Sirocco going to get an interview. Jack Jurek. Fantastic bowling title match. Jack, unbelievable. How does it feel, bounce back, last year finished second, this year 299 in the title match? What are you thinking? Um, I think I got just a little revenge on 19 and 20 this year for a change. Um, just amazing, I mean, I've been close so many times in, in the USBC events, for whatever reason, I've, I've just always loved the events, matched up pretty well, bowled well. Um, been Come away second like five times, so uh, it was, it's nice to be on the other side. I tried to make you a you know, Nostradamus there. You told me if I shoot 300, you can't lose. So I, was, you know, I tried. Correct, I did say that. Uh, so uh, this, where does this rank among all your victories? Um, it's definitely very special. I mean, I think the, the first one, obviously, is going to always be the most treasured. Uh, my second national, having my parents there um, after 14 and a half years was, uh, was pretty ironic. Uh, 61 now in... Uh, it's been a long time, and this feels so good. It's hard to obviously overcome a little bit. 
but uh, uh, everybody at home, I mean, uh, you know, having, having a shop, uh, my customers at home knowing that I'm on the road right now and I can't take care of them, I think they understand. Hopefully, uh, this is uh, a good, uh, nice little reward for them that uh, waiting for me to come back home, uh, it was worth it. All right, congratulations, Jack. Why don't you grab that hardware, my friend? That is yours, your 2024 Super Senior Classic Champion, 299 in the title match, Jack. Jerk! Let's hear it! All right, folks, we're going to let Jack take a few photos, but we're going to get an interview with him. Tom, uh, man, that was pretty cool. Obviously, Jack, pretty emotional about that. What were your thoughts on, uh, on the event to, to wrap it up for the week? Well, we finally got the fireworks in that match that I was talking about. <laughs> yes, I kept saying, I kept trying to will the guys into some really good bowling. Um, you, you know, for me, I'm, I'm close to Jack, obviously. I'm one of the seconds that he was talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. His, my USBC Masters title came against Jack. Uh, I couldn't be happier for Jack. Overcoming the demons, um, all I could think about when he was practicing, you know, we saw him leave a couple of 2-4-8-10s, and oh my goodness, you know, is he going to do it again? Yeah, yeah. You know, after back-to-back -back leading the events. Uh, to watch him go out and bowl 299, uh, other than day one, I mean, he was the class of the field he led. Yeah. The rest, the, the rest of the way, you know, Absolutely. Pete, Pete McCordick led day one. Uh, what, what a great event. Um, you know, a Hall of Fame field, man. We USBC Hall of Famers, PBA Hall of Famers, and uh, Jack Jurek comes out on top of all of them. All right, well, I'm going to head out, get uh, get Jack up here so we can have you do an interview with him and get his, uh, his more extended thoughts after the victory. Uh, but uh, I'll be right back. And, uh, man, that was a great show. Great show, Tom. Yeah, JT, I enjoyed working with you this week, and what, what, an, what an awesome show. What an awesome display of bowling by these great bowlers, and uh, let's go get Jack and see if he can come up here and talk to us for a little bit. Oh, good Lord. <laughs> <sighs> all right, Jack. Wow. You're, don't, don't make me do this because you know I cry all the time. <laughs> it's too, I, I it's too late. Talking, I, was, you talked about I got more the, in me yet. <laughs> you talked about all the seconds you had, and I started talking about one of them because obviously we talked about it uh, the other day when you are in the booth. We share yeah. a little, little bit of a bond of as course. well. Um, walk us through what happened during practice. Because you did not look very comfortable um, during practice. No, with that. no, even you know the warm-up shots before the show. You know the pair is the pair is a little touchy. Um, and when I came back over, I, I pretty much I knew in my head I was not going to try and play straight from out like I had most of the week because um, it's just it's too sensitive, and I've you know <laughs> too many bad thoughts. So uh, when Chris when Chris went started with a, a shinier ball in match two and then switched to his harsh reality went up and actually started you know it almost seemed to blend out the lane a little bit better for him and you know that kind of confirmed it with jimmy that you know maybe you want to try something just a little bit bigger so as it turned out uh, i guess it was a good idea yeah i gotta be honest i was saying when you were practicing i can't believe that he hasn't moved all the way to the right and just thrown one up the gutter like he did last night yeah. as we talked earlier right. that seemed like you know, was, you know this was morning a thought that yeah. was in your head well that, that was my hope you know originally especially based on that uh, that game i bowled against lenny um but you know, this morning when we warmed up before the show, it just didn't my ball just didn't see it the same way as it did yesterday. So I kind of put that thought out of my head pretty quick. Well, it was a great decision. Um, 
Magic Jim. Magic Jim, <laughs> it sure had some magic today. Thank you. You know, it's, it's hard to tell sitting clear back here. Did you play them identical? Or were I you actually playing did. Them slightly, I, okay? I, was, I was standing, you know, maybe a half board, you know, a, a smidge different on one lane. Uh, I came, the first time I came a little uh, a little tight, I moved like just a, a little bit left on the one lane. That, that was about it. But yeah, they were pretty, they actually played pretty close. Fortunately, using the bigger ball, when I got it in a little bit, it still read the lane a little bit and kind of just laid there. Yeah, so uh, you were talking a little bit with Damon out there about how much this means to you and, and your customers at home. Uh, anybody you want to thank? Oh, everybody. I mean, I've, I've had so many people along the way. Um, you know, after, after dealing with my mom and going through all of that, it was, a, it was a rough time. Fortunately, you know, I've got a lot of good people. I've got some new people in my life that uh, just kind of made me appreciate life a little bit more. And uh, the bowling's still pretty serious, and it's still, I still take it hard when, I, you know, when it doesn't go well, but slowly I'm making progress. Any, any sponsors at home you're, you're oh, yeah, you've got to thank? 900 Global has been with me now for uh, going into my 10th year with them now. Um, and they were, they've been great the whole time. I mean, especially when I couldn't bowl with my, you know, taking care of my mom. They stayed with me, uh, gave me any support I needed. SPI, I couldn't ask for a better company to be attached with. So, yeah, uh, I've just recently come on with Bowlify. Um, I appreciate uh, Ryan Simonelli reaching out to me uh, last year and asking me if I wanted to be a part of that. That was my first shirt contract, so I'm very thankful for him and, and Bola Five for taking me on. Glad I finally gave him a chance to uh, reap some of the benefits of having me. <laughs> yep. Well, Jack, great week. Uh, I you. personally couldn't be happier for you. I Maybe the only that. other person I might have been rooting for was Lenny. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah. I mean, Lenny's going and, for, and right? no offense to Lenny, I, I, I think that would have been the hardest thing for me to try and do is to bowl if, if Lenny ran the ladder and I had to bowl him because that's, that's one where, gosh, you, know, you, you can't help but feel – good about just having him here bowling again and for him to bowl like he does still uh, amazing it would have been a fantastic story and hopefully he appreciates that if it couldn't be him you know maybe it was me i think everybody else on the on the planet appreciates that if it wasn't lenny it was you yeah. uh, i know i do and i'm i'm sure lenny uh, feels the exact same way uh, do us a favor take it easy on us next week would you well You're throwing the ball really good I for a 61 say, year old yeah i have to say right now uh you know i, I took the, the second week off of florida and i skipped that one went home got some practice in and actually made it a little change from five steps down to four and uh but for whatever reason i mean i, I came out and uh it's clear water bowled very well I, I didn't quite finish that on that one off but I, I really felt good throwing the ball and uh you know i had a couple good practices before i came back out here and it's Right now, I'm just kind of riding a, a good a good streak right now with this four steps. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, congratulations Tommy, again, Jack. Thank you. Uh, couldn't be, I couldn't think of a more deserving champion. Uh, great job. 2024 USBC Super mm. Senior Classic Champion. Jack Sounds pretty good. Jurek. Sure does. Thank you, Tom. Yep, thanks for joining All us, right, Jack. My pleasure. Well, Tom, nice job with uh, with the interview there. Uh, Jack Jurek, such a such a nice man, uh, and a great week. Uh, just just unbelievable bowling. I mean, Jack, uh, he definitely wanted to get a little bit of revenge there on 19 and 20. Uh, not on a, any particular person, but I mean, he absolutely did everything he needed to do to make sure he took home the title today. Yeah, I, I'm very impressed with what he did there. Over overcoming, you know, I talked to him about a little bit about he wasn't very confident in the practice shots there before the match and he just committed to it and he went up and he made great shots and that's what great bowlers do and uh, I didn't give him too hard of a time about being a quitter and I, didn't <laughs> I actually didn't even bring it up at all but 299 after bowling 166 I believe it was last year on this pair uh, that's quite an improvement. Yeah he's got his average up to 230 the last two years <laughs> in the title <laughs> match now uh, uh, but that's going to do it for our coverage folks uh, we got another great event coming up for you here next week this young gentleman is going to bowl it former champion of the event, USBC uh, Senior Masters. So you're going to not want to miss the coverage for that. I'm going to be heading home, but Craig Elliott uh, is going to bring you the coverage as, along with Brian Kane and Dave Lamont's going to come in as well. And uh, he, he might do a little bit of time, uh, hopefully not during the match play, right? But uh, during the qualifying, I know you're going to do one block yeah, a day. Yeah, I'm going to sit in for one block a day during the qualifying, and uh, I hope after that's over, I hope I don't have the opportunity to come back. <laughs> right. That's the plan anyway, so uh, best laid plans. We'll see what happens. All right, well, good luck next week. Week, sir but Thank uh, thanks much. thanks so much for
for the coverage. Before we sign off, just want to say thank you to the USBC and the USBC Board of Directors, uh, the BPAA and the BPAA Board of Directors, all of our gold partners, Kegel, the official lane maintenance supplier of the USBC, and also Lane Talk for providing all of the live scoring here uh, this week at Samstown. Uh, also like to thank the athletes for putting on a great show. We had so many great games all week long. Lenny Borish, what a great story he was. Ron Moore was a great story as well. A big comeback for him, and it was nice to see him get a check and have a chance to make it into the top 12. Uh, but Jack Jurek is your champion, and he put on a great show for us all week. Last, we'd like to thank you guys out in the Bowl TV community. We couldn't bring you all the coverage we do here on Bowl TV with Without your support uh, and we've got a lot more coming up for you even today on bull tv the pwba classic series second round of match play coming up this evening so be sure to watch that later today and then as i mentioned the usbc super senior masters next week with this young man uh, leading the way a 324 player field of the best pba 50 athletes in the world so for everybody here pba hall of famer tom hess brian kane i'm jason thomas uh, remember on Bowl TV, Bowling Lives Here, and we hope you have a great rest of your day here on this Sunday.